Hey guys, RPM here, hope you're doing well. Having a really great day this video. I'm gonna be testing out my Bitmain S19 XP on a new Bitcoin firmware called LuxOS. Thank you to Luxor.tech for sponsoring today's video. We are gonna be testing out their new firmware and I'm here to see if it is more efficient than the stock Bitmain firmware. So we're gonna keep note of the stock Bitmain firmware, which I'm getting right now about 142 terahash at about 3,261 watts. That does fluctuate a bit, I'll explain in a second, but the watt per hash or joules per hash currently is 22.9. Now I know Bitmain does advertise their S19 XP at about 21.5 watt per hash but because of the testing environment that I'm utilizing right now it is a little bit hotter and also the fans on these S19 XP's or any ASIC in general do change depending on the environment if it's hot or cold or whatnot the numbers do change a bit so if you guys are gonna do this yourself just a disclaimer silicon lottery as well as your environment does matter so the power numbers that you guys see in my videos take it with a grain of salt these bitmain fans do take quite a bit of power, especially if they're at full bore, which I believe they're at 6,000 RPM, according to the web GUI of this ASIC miner running right now in my current environment. Right now, the LuxOS firmware from Luxor.tech is actually only supported on Xilinx control boards. So right now, I only have a AM Logic control board, but I also do have a BeagleBone board, and then I do have a Xilinx board here. So I actually did test it before I record this video. This Xilinx board was actually meant for an S19J Pro, but it actually does work on my S19 XP. So for those that have an S19 XP with the memory slot in the front, you will be good to go. Or if it does indicate that it is a Xilinx control board, then you can install the LuxOS firmware on your Xilinx control board. Let me just quickly install this control board into my S19 XP. Okay, I got the new Xilinx board in. I'll tell you guys real quick how I did it. I unscrewed the back. I was able to press a button to lift the cover and then there was two screws on the front of the panel and then the next step was to unplug all the connectors from the existing control board and then simply pull out the control board and install the new one. Okay, next step is to install the Lux OS firmware on a SD card, assuming you already have a Xilinx control board on your S19 XP. So the requirements for a micro SD card is at least a 16 gig gigabyte micro SD card. I bought one off Amazon or actually two. It came in a kit. It was like less than $10. Link down below for micro SD card, but you can do eight gig as well. It is compatible, but I have a 16 gig here. You will need a micro SD card reader because you're going to be plugging this into your computer because we're going to burn the image on to the micro SD card. So first you're going to want to sign up on Luxor.tech. Link down below to the referral account helps the channel out. Then you'll wanna to go to their firmware page, download the firmware, and then as well, you wanna download Bellina Etcher. When you install Bellina Etcher, plug in your micro SD card reader as well as the micro SD, and then you're gonna to go to Bellina Etcher. You're gonna choose the extracted file that you just downloaded, so make sure you extract that, and then you're gonna click on that file, and then select the micro SD card in Bellina Etcher and hit flash. Once that's done, eject your micro SD card from the computer, and then you're gonna place it into your S19 XP in the micro SD card slot like I have here, okay, for your Xilinx control board. That does matter a lot. Okay, next up is to turn on your S19 XP. I have two C13 to C14 cables. I bought these off infinitecables.com and they are gonna go into a 240 volt 30 amp PDU, okay? This is one of my circuits here. And you know what? We're just gonna do that right now. And we're gonna hear this thing roar. And then we're gonna go into the computer and grab the IP address 
of this guy because that is what we're going to use to log in to the web GUI of this ASIC miner and set up the mining pool and I'll show you guys that in a sec. I'll also show you the features of LuxOS. Okay, so I'm going to go into the computer and then also talk about the efficiency stock preset that this is going to run on LuxOS and I'll show you guys the power consumption and the numbers of overclocking numbers while we talk about how to set this up. So I will see you all in the computer. Okay. So here we are in the web GUI for the Antminer S19 XP. So for anyone that has an S19 XP and has done this LuxOS firmware upgrade and are wondering how to get the IP address. Now I used a software called Advanced IP Scanner. This is just a free download on Google that I searched that you can download to search up the IP address of your S19 XP after you've done the micro SD insertion and turned on your ASIC. Alternatively, you can go into your router to get your IP address as well. Once you get the IP address, you can log in with root root, and then you will get into the web GUI here locally for your S19 XP. This is really cool. Now, the next step is you'll probably want to set up your mining pool. Okay, so you're, you're gonna wanna go to pools on the dashboard here and you're gonna go to add new pool. And this is where you'll make sure you want to set up an account on luxor.tech. Okay, so this is where, link down below, you can register for a new account. And uh, once you do that, you log in, you're gonna see the website dashboard on app.luxor.tech. Okay, this is after you log in. This is separate from the ASIC mining firmware. Okay, this is local to your network, all right? Internal website, essentially, to log into your ASIC miner. So going back to luxor.tech, if you want to add a miner, you're gonna go to miners here. You're gonna scroll down, and then you're gonna hit on this, wrench button right here okay this is the information you're going to need to copy which there are buttons here to simply just copy it and then you're going to go back to your internal s19 xp paste that in there go back you'll then want to copy the worker configuration which you can name yourself so for instance s19 xp01 for instance and copy that okay copy that into the username portion in the web gui for your s19 xp password will then be one two three or whatever password you would like save pool and it should show up there now you may need to remove the stock pool if there is one and then it should start showing up on luxor.tech you can see here mine shows up here s19 xp lux01 i've actually been mining this now for over about let's see a day and 15 hours i've been testing here so there was a feature i wanted to go through here is hash rate splitting you can actually split your hash rate with other people or another mining pool of your choice if you wanted to. So for instance, instead of adding a new pool, which it would just act as a backup, uh, like for another pool, let's say Luxor went down, you can add in another mining pool, for instance. But let's say if you want a hash rate split, there is a button up here that says add new group of pools. So I'll just call this uh, RPM02, create a group. And here we can add a new pool, right? And then we can here split the quota, the hash rate, let's say 50. All right, we're going to edit this to 50 and we can edit this one to 50 as well. So there'll be another mining pool here that we can set to split the hash rate. I found that to be really interesting and I could see maybe we could do some hash rate testing. Maybe I could do that and uh, see if it splits off into two different mining pools and then we'll see which pool earns more, right? Maybe that might be something I could test or uh, renting out hash rate or something like that for multiple people. So that's a actually a really cool feature that obviously the Bitmain stock firmware can't do. So that's how you mine to luxor.tech with your S19 XP. I'm gonna talk about the features, also talk about my testing here of the different preset profiles, efficiency, and we'll also talk about the LuxOS fees regarding uh, the structure, the fee structure for, you know, installing the Luxor firmware and also mining to luxor.tech. Okay, let's get into the hot topic. A lot of people probably wondering, Red Panda, how's the efficiency of the LuxOS compared to the stock Bitmain firmware? And yes, I'm getting a little bit more efficiency. If not, it's the same. You know, there is a variable, like I said in the beginning, regarding the fans. I did record about 30 minutes ago as of recording at the wall power consumption for my S19 XP. It's about 3160 to 3140. Fluctuates a bit because of the fans. And just to show you here, the real uptime, I just recorded 30 minutes ago. And yeah, see 3157. And I'm just refreshing the browser just to show I'm not lying. You guys can see. And so the power usage in the web GUI shows 3.13. 3. 
So I'm going to have to say it's pretty spot on. It's pretty spot on, if not maybe another 10 or 20 watts more at the wall compared to the web GUI. So that's pretty good. But now comparing it to the stock Bitmain firmware, I was getting 142 terahash at 3,261 watts. So that was a watt per hash of 22.9. And then my Lux OS default, 142 terahash, 3138 watts at 22.0. So pretty comparable, pretty close. I'm going to say it's margin of error, one to 3%. I think that's, that's pretty good. But here's where the advantage is regarding LuxOS firmware for your S19 XP is the preset overclocking profiles. Okay. So you can overclock this thing a lot more to get more hash rate. And I've done a couple of different tests here. I went all the way up to 13.9 volt at 625 mega hash, went up to 182 tera hash. It was amazing, but it only lasted for a couple minutes because it was getting too hot and it auto shut off at around, I think 70 degrees Celsius. That's a feature in Lux OS, which is great. So one of the hash boards uh, was getting too hot and it auto turned off. So that was really great. But uh, yeah, I, I personally, I wouldn't advise running it at this because that is a lot of power. You can see at the wall, I was getting 5205 watts, just, just insane. So pretty cool, right? But there's also other overclock numbers I did test down here, you guys can see here. I'll talk about that later on in this video. Now let's go through the features of the LuxOS firmware and also the mining pool uh, Luxor.tech. On the dashboard of my S19 XP, really great metrics here to show the terahash temperatures, all the different numbers here, more so than the Bitmain firmware. I'm gonna have to say this looks a lot better. I really like the also dark theme. The fan monitoring is way more accurate than the Bitmain one, as, as far as I can tell. The Bitmain one for me was stuck at like 6,000 RPM just constantly. Then going down, there's also hashboard information here. Very thorough statistics showing the numbers here, temperatures, you know, current voltage, frequency, all that kind of stuff, pool as well. And then if we go to preset profiles, you can see here, this is where I showed you earlier, where we can choose the overclocking numbers here, which I'll talk about later on this video. And going down, this is really cool. You can see each individual chip, all right, on the boards. Found this to be pretty nice because it will test each chip and tell you if it's healthy or not. And on the right here, will tell you if one of the chips are unknown or unhealthy, okay? So <laughs> when I did that high pre-clock overclock one, it was in the process of checking each chip, but then one of the boards turned off because it was just way too hot. Depends on your environment. You gotta have a lot of cooling if you're deciding to do a higher overclocking, higher voltages, okay? So again, they have a warning here. Overclocking may damage your device. Proceed at your own risk, all right? So that's a disclaimer there. There's temperature and fans here. You can set your target temp, hot temp, dangerous temperature. So this is where my board shut down at 70, before 70. So that I found that to be a really great feature of Luxor.tech here, really great. Fan modes, you can do automatic or manual. Okay, you can set the fan speeds if you want. And uh, it's pretty instant. When you change the man to manual and change the power and the minimum fans you wanna change, it's instant, I noticed right away. Then of course they have the pools here. I did talk about that earlier. They have the logging here as well. Uh, to see any information that you need. And finally, settings, okay? They have the automatic update for the Luxor firmware. So I found that to be pretty cool. I would honestly wait until maybe it, until you're having a problem or, you know, they say that it's, you know, ready to roll out or you simply want to test it on one of your ASICs, especially if you have like a whole bunch of them and then maybe something might go wrong. You never know, you never know, but great feature nonetheless. Okay, now let's go to the website of Luxor.tech. So this is where it's going to connect your S19 XP or any ASIC for that matter to Luxor.tech. They actually have Sia coin. Uh, Zcash, Pirate Coin, Horizon, Equihash, and Dash. I currently also have my Sia Coin ASICs, my HS Lights mining to Luxor.tech right now. It's pretty awesome. You can see my results here, pretty cool. So navigating through Luxor.tech, it's very easy, very fluid website here. They got miners, media, manage wallet, watch your links, notifications, profile, security, API keys, referrals, and of course the logout button here. There's also help and feedback button here if you need more support. So this is Really great, easy to manage navigation for your ASIC miners. I also really love the dark mode. This is really great. So big one you probably wanna do first is set up your security for your account. Make sure you set up two-factor authentication. I'm doing this myself with the Google Authenticator just to give you that peace of mind to have that extra security for your account. Now going back to minor overview here, you can see your pool. You can also see Luxor.tech's mining pool. 
how much hash rate they have, also the pool fee here as well. I will talk about the pool fees, the fee models here in a second, okay, regarding the firmware plus mining to Luxor.tech or not, okay, talk about that in a second. Now, let's go to miners tab here, okay, so this is where you're going to see a lot more statistics regarding your ASIC miner, okay, mining overview, also revenue and such here as well, as you guys can see, a lot of different tests. So I haven't really had a great uptime, <laughs> so don't mind this numbers here that you guys can see here. But if you have multiple ASIC miners in maybe different locations, you can do select tags. Uh, there's actually worker tagging here. So let's just say I have like a new, uh, let's just say a, a basement, all right? Just a basement here. Um, add workers, I'll add my S19 uh, Lux01. You can choose a different color. I'll just do red, save, and you can see it says basement. So that's pretty cool. And I accidentally just removed one of my uh, offline uh, rigs you can actually do that here just go like that and it removes so that's pretty good too but going back to the website now of luxor.tech okay so for instance if you wanted to let's say your revenue and transactions uh, you can also download a csv okay for all that so specifically obvious reasons for taxes and such you'll want to download your transactions for all of your mining and you know the initial cost basis of when you mine it and such great way to download the csv here now the next part here watcher links this is a really cool way for if you want to send it for another person just to show them you know if you click on this it'll copy it and if you go to a new browser tab i'll show you guys here basically it's just watching your farm your asics and i'd say this is a great way for maybe for myself if i had my phone i don't want to log into anywhere i could just use this watcher link instead just to watch my asics this way or leave it on like a tv screen or something hey that that would be a pretty cool idea wall mounted full screen then i can see this a nice wall art or something of my asics i thought that would be a pretty nice feature and then under manage you can see here is where you can actually delegate your account if you'd want you can do operator as well which i can show you another part this is called the operator dashboard this is a totally separate account from my other one here and this is an operator overview so let's say if you are a mining hosting company and you're hosting a bunch of other you know bitcoin asics so you can add the clients here um, you can invite the client, of course, and you can manage their rigs this way. So pretty granular way to see all of your clients, manage your clients and all this type of stuff this way. Really cool of Luxor.tech. I really like this. Time to start a Bitcoin mining hosting business, right? Right? No, no, just I'm going to stay as the content creator. But going back now, there's also notification settings here. If you would like, you can do hash rate when it starts dropping. That means... Uh, most likely it's off and then you can send it to one of your email addresses you can do efficiency sub account threshold as well and uh, if the efficiency starts swaying down one two three five percent you can get an email for that as well i found that to be pretty cool and then referrals now this is one where you guys can sign up under my rpm account link down below if you decide to register would really appreciate that but you guys can also do this and generate your own referral link as well if you want to invite your friends and such to mining on Luxor.tech. Now, the Luxor firmware fees model here. So some people may be asking. So for instance, if you decided to install the Luxor firmware, just as a regular Joe like me here, it would be a 2.8% fee, all right, for the firmware. So for instance, if you were mining to another Bitcoin mining pool, let's just say F2 pool, they have a 2.5% PPS plus fee. So not only are you gonna get the 2.5% fee from F2 pool, but you're also going to get add on, adding on the firmware 2.8% as well. Now, if you were mining to Luxor.tech without the firmware, it would be 2.5% similar to F2Pool. But if you decide to install the LuxOS firmware and then mine on Luxor.tech, the fee combined would be 2.8%. Now, I know that the Bitmain stock firmware also has a fee as well. I'm not quite sure how much that is, but you are limited on the features and the stats and a lot of stuff that I explained before is limited. So, but as you can see, if you're midsize or institutional, I'm not quite sure what constitutes as midsize, but you can get much lower fees for the pool and firmware 2.4%. So this is going to be really beneficial for those that are much bigger uh, mining farms and you have a lot more control. And also, I guess the biggest benefit, in my opinion, is going to be overclocking because you can't do that on the stock Bitmain firmware. Now, this is where it comes in, right? We can go up much higher in terms of terahash. Okay, so let's explain this now. The testing that I've done on the different presets, okay, this goes on to the preset profiles that I did here. I didn't do all of them, but I did quite a bit. And just to note as well, efficiency, okay, efficiency wise, I found that the 12.2 volt at 300 megahertz seemed to be the best preset 
in terms of efficiency, I was able to get 21.6 watt per hash or joules per hash. And that was 87.9 terahash at 1901 watts. All right. So that was that was pretty good. Also low fan speed. It was pretty quiet in my opinion as well. So if you're trying to go for max efficiency, this would be it. But to be honest, it's not too far off from all these other ones that I tested the presets here. The 12.5 volt able to get 102 terahash, 12.6, 117 terahash. And of course the stock default 12.7 volt one was obviously on par pretty much in my testing the second best in terms of efficiency at 142 terahash pretty much the stock of the ASIC miner but here's where the value comes in for Lux OS in my opinion not only the features and everything that I explained it's also overclocking to much higher terahash of course we are losing a little bit more efficiency just by like increments here but we are getting more terahash so that's going to earn you more bitcoin in a sense so it depends how you look at it I mean your electrical costs really do matter as well if you have really cheap electrical cost i mean going up to you know 163 terahash on this model assuming you have good cooling could be really prosperous for you as you're going to be earning more in terms of bitcoin so 163.3 terahash at 41.74 watts i found this to be a pretty good one but of course as we started going higher in voltage as you guys can see here the temperatures did start to go up so just be mindful <laughs> if you decide to do this 13.9 volt one it it got hot and like I said it only ran for a couple minutes for me and then it turned off so wouldn't advise doing this unless you had really cold environment cool temperatures to run something like this thought that was pretty fun so I think that's it my friends thank you for watching let me know if you made it to the end of this video and let me know if you guys are going to try out the LuxOS firmware on your S19 XP or even S19J Pro. I'm gonna have another video in a week or two testing out my S19J Pro and we'll see if we can get this going and also see the efficiency on low power mode comparing to the Bitmain low power mode on their firmware. Okay, so we're gonna see how that goes. But let me know your guys' thoughts about the S19 XP that I tested today. Put a lot of work into this one. Let me know your guys' thoughts. I appreciate you all. I'll see you all in the next one. Have a good one. Peace out.